Son of Godzilla achieves two things. First is it gives us the most epic fantasy father figure of all time. The next is it actually calls dads to task. But it's a dumb movie, right? I mean, it's just men in rubber lizard suits beating each other up. There's nothing thought-provoking or deep in such a dumb, campy kaiju flick. Wrong. Wrong. And here's why. Full disclaimer, I am not trying to put baggage on this movie where there really isn't any. Writer Shinichi Sekizawa rarely tried to put anything overtly political or analytical within his movies. He just liked to entertain first and foremost, and boy, did he succeed at that. But it's so funny how Son of Godzilla resonates to this day as being more than just another Godzilla movie. It actually achieves something new in a field oversaturated in strange giant monsters. It provides a whole new chapter to Godzilla's character. He's a dad now. Minya is not really his kid at all. It seems Godzilla sort of begrudgingly adopted Minya after being drawn to Sol Gale Island from Minya's brainwaves. Yet he's no less a father, albeit an accidental one, which is almost more poignant to today than it was even back in 1960s Japan. Instead of being planned, Minya, is just, Minya literally just kind of falls into Godzilla's lap, and now he has a kid. Uh, crap. But instead of drawing back or giving up, Godzilla does become a true dad. He triumphs over this new challenge. He doesn't walk away. He doesn't retreat. He ultimately accepts this new challenge instead of retreating. It's a rocky road, but, but he gets there. And that's probably why Godzilla is so relatable to dads who are watching this movie with their kids. They recognize themselves in Godzilla, like the kids, and particularly little boys, kid, the kids recognize themselves in Minya. This movie thus achieves what every family movie dreams of. There's stuff for the adults to relate to or laugh at in relatability, and there's also stuff for the kids to get excited about. Godzilla's entire arc is about his acceptance that his life has changed. It's nothing groundbreaking. There's nothing overly complicated or even really overtly deep within this movie, but it's nevertheless really relatable. And it's funny because you'd think Son of Godzilla would put Minya more in the limelight, and in many ways it does. The camera doesn't follow Godzilla sleeping, it follows Minya goofing around and playing like a little kid. And like almost all these movies, it's not the human characters who bring the profound change or, or leave a lasting impression. Though they are fun in this movie, don't get me wrong. But it's the monsters who teach us more about ourselves through their actions more than the humans talking. It's also interesting to note that Godzilla is alone through this whole arc. There is no Mrs. Godzilla. There's no mom. It's just him being the sole protector of Minya. You see so much about single mothers today. You see so much about them, the mom side of the story, or the motherly role within child's life, that you rarely hear anything about the father, the single dad, the, the father trying to desperately balance work life with the ever-important father-son time. Godzilla teaches Minya many of the fundamentals of being, well, an adult. He teaches Minya how to breathe his atomic breath. He disciplines Minya after Minya throws a bunch of tantrums. And Minya learns the dangers of their reality. At one point, Minya actually steps in and protects Godzilla from, from Kamanga using the very thing Godzilla taught him, his atomic breath. I really love this movie. I, I do. I, I'm not sure if you can tell, but this, this movie is just so goddamn cute. There's a give-and-take element in Minya and Godzilla's relationship, like all father-son relationships. Minya learns from Godzilla, and ultimately Godzilla learns from Minya. And that's a beautiful thing, I really like that. Now, in the end, Godzilla transforms from being a begrudging, accidental father to growing fond of this little kid, despite him not actually being his own. He goes from not knowing what to do to knowing exactly what to do. And the proof that I'm not actually reading too much into this, the proof that this is exactly what the filmmaker's intent was, is because of the original ending. As shot, the original ending had Godzilla walk to the coastline and only begrudgingly go back and help Minya through the snow. 
Godzilla turns back and is ashamed of Minya. Kind of, it's kind of like what we see before, kind of like during the atomic breath shenanigans and stuff like that. He even threatens to hit Minya at one point during the sequence, similar to what we saw earlier within the film. I don't know who thought about changing this ending, but that person earned their paycheck. It, it could have been Sekizawa. It could have been Sekizawa. He was known to have liked being on set to see what was going on. Or maybe one of the suit actors or just the overall crew in general might have sort of collectively come up with this idea. But nevertheless, they reshot this ending. And that's the ending we get in the movie. Now, Godzilla stops and turns before reaching the sea. He looks back and sees Minya struggling. At first, he tries to encourage Minya to get up and walk, but it soon becomes clear he can't. Minya is just too weak. Instead of looking confused or, or being strict, now Godzilla knows exactly what he needs to do. And the rest is history. It, it truly is one of the most heartwarming scenes in kaiju movie history. Hell, I'd even argue cinema history. It's just so heartwarming. Godzilla's grown a soft spot for the little kid, and the, and the snow falling serves as a, a perfect juxtaposition of the whole situation, the warmth that has grown within Godzilla and such. After all, Minya did help Godzilla combat Kamanga. The scene where Godzilla and Minya look at each other, and then they both shoot their atomic breath at Kamanga at the same time, and basically roast a giant spider. I love that. It's so cute. Now, the whole theme of Godzilla growing to like Minya is massively important in understanding Japanese family values. Stuart Galbraith expressed some of this issue within the Godzilla vs. Megalon audio commentary. My friend and colleague Akemi Tosto, she says that because Japanese fathers typically spend so much time away from home due to their work, a common children's fantasy in stories back then was to have a big brother who would always be around to play with and help raise you. And what better than to have a big brother who invents a remote-controlled robot that grows to gigantic size? In Japan, it's not at all uncommon for the father to live in another city hundreds of miles away. And he, he lives and he works and he comes back home maybe once every three or four months and that's it. That's not, not uncommon at all. What better father figure than Godzilla who embodies masculine energy? He's a brawler fighting other monsters left and right. He's a monarchal figure exuding king of the monsters. He destroys city. He's an allegorical destroyer. He's also protector of the earth in some cases. He brings out the masculine side in a man. He makes us cheer like we're watching a wrestling match or, or seeing our favorite football team or baseball team. This is for the boys. Granted, over 96% of my audience are indeed men, but I'll say it anyways. I'm speaking about men because I am a man, and thus I can relate to men more. Sorry, girls. Now, in Japan, the whole mentality of business above all else, men needing to make a name for themselves, has created a gargantuan population issue. Birth rates are low, and the population is dying off. The population is just getting older and dying off. Instead of sitting down and growing a family, you work. It's all you do. Making sure you succeed is the only real driving goal within a man's life. Family comes second. And, and that's the mentality that has also been, been hitting over here in the United States. People aren't having families anymore. Families don't, the family unit doesn't really exist anymore. And it, it can be argued that much of this lack of direction, lack of want for a family, stems from the lack of a family unit. I'm not saying that you need to have a family to necessarily be a good person or anything like that, but not having an older male presence in the life of growing boys is, it's detrimental to their development. I don't care what you say, it's detrimental. Now, let me clarify what a father figure is. A father figure doesn't actually need to be THE biological father, as seen in Son of Godzilla, after all. It could be a teacher, an uncle, a grandfather, uh, hell, even an older brother, which, by the way, Godzilla would tackle in the 1970s. Uh, the important aspect of this all is, is a male who is older, in which the younger boy tries to emulate. A person that this younger boy can look up to and see as an idol. Now, Son of Godzilla is clever. I mean, it's dumb and it's fun and full of lively kaiju action, which kids absolutely love. And I know kids love it because I loved it as a kid. 
But hidden within there is a call for dads to be dads. Dads need to be strict. They need to protect their kids. They need to be stern and, yes, punish bad behavior. But a dad also needs to be warm. Not necessarily a hug, but a firm shoulder to lean on when things go wrong, because things will inevitably go wrong. A dad is supposed to teach his son how to do things, how to breathe his atomic breath uh, into a pool of red water, for example. Because a dad provides a firm place for a boy to grow and explore and learn on his own. A dad pushes his son to exceed his own limits. And, and, and this role can be played by father or mother. But in a masculine sense, meaning that of a son more than a daughter, the tide leans towards the male role, a father. A father tends to be more physical, to promote basically a more rough and tough environment, which I will always argue is a good thing for a boy to have, a rough and tough environment. And one of the things that I can think of that as an example of that is a typical dad thing, which is picking up their kid and tossing them in the air and catching them. I know that is seen as a bad thing today because we're pansies. A dad just picking up his kid and throwing him in the air. That's teaching the kid trust. The kid learns that my dad will catch me. A boy wrestles and tussles with his dad, and that causes the boy to learn where the limits of pain are, where to be tough, when to fool around, and also when to pull back and be gentle. There are countless people I know who just don't know who their dad is. They never had a dad growing up. It was just a mom or a different guardian of some kind. This isn't to call to a return of family values or anything like that where mom needs to stay home and work in the kitchen. No, that's just ludicrous. But so many boys just don't have that father figure anymore. Not even in schools, where something like sev over 75% of teachers are female. Especially as a boy grows older and, and reaches adolescence, not having a father figure there as, as someone to emulate or to learn from it just doesn't help their development. In fact, it hinders it. I'll actually uh, end it here before we go further down this rabbit hole and this video just goes on and on and on and on and on. Uh, <laughs> I don't want this video to get outright ludicrous. Son of Godzilla achieves two things. First is providing the most epic fantasy father figure of all time. And second is calling dads to task, to accept their reality within a fantastical setting to not retreat from reality, but to recognize it. And Son of Godzilla is just a fun movie. All of what I've just said aside. It's cute, it's got action, it's got amazing special effects, wonderful puppetry work by Sadamasa Arikawa, beautiful sets, fun human characters as well. It's just a fun movie that the whole family can just sit back and enjoy. Because I mentioned them earlier, if you like to learn more about the writer of Son of Godzilla, Shinichi Sekizawa. Make sure to check out the description below. I have talked about him in length. You can check that out there as well. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed. Hit the subscribe button if you want to learn more. All of my social media is also in the description below. And in the end, this is Adam Noyes of AN Productions saying... Sayonara.